June 1st. We have gone until June 1st without seeing a Major League Baseball game in the regular season. That is a sentence I literally didn't think I would ever hear or say or have to talk about on this channel, but that is the way that it is right now. And it's probably going to be going on for at least another month. But we do have some more news. We have some more information. And it comes in the form of a new proposal from the MLB Players Association to the owners to hopefully start the 2020 season as soon as possible. I have all the details. I have all the information that you need to know. I'm going to give you that as as well as my opinion as I always do in these videos. I personally like this one. I don't think the owners will accept it. That's just how negotiations go, but I think we're moving in the right direction. So before I do get going into all these details, information, if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like on it. That's the best way to show your support in the channel. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, click that sub button, join the team. Remember to get in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this new proposal coming to you from the players. And don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNickMark. Links to all my social media is down in the description below. So we know about the owners. They don't want to pay the players the prorated contracts. They want to shave off as much money as possible from the 2020 season as they can. And as a businessman, you can understand why. Why would they want to spend more money when they're not going to be bringing in as much? You completely understand it. Does it make it right? Does it make it wrong? I find it's on the wrong side, especially when you have contracts with players, like you signed an obligation to them. And that's really what's been holding this up a lot. The pay. Pay is going to be super important. These guys don't want to necessarily be out there playing baseball every day, possibly getting sick and make less money. So the Players Association has come up with a new proposal that they sent to Major League Baseball yesterday, and hopefully in the next day, next two days, we need to hear back from the owners whether or not they like it, whether or not they dislike it. Are they going to approve this? Are they going to go back to the negotiation? Okay, so as I was about to drop this video, we got news from Jeff Passan about Major League owners coming back with their own counter proposal, prorated contracts, 50 game season. Still no agreement. Gonna continue this video because there is a lot to talk about about the Players Association's proposal, but just know this going forward. I'm aware. So let's go ahead and find out exactly what's in this proposal. So the original proposal by the owners was for an 82 game season. The players have come back with a 114 game proposal. That is a full 32 games more than the owners initially proposed. Under this new proposal by the Players Association, the season would start on June 30th and run all the way through October 31st, not including the postseason. So the regular season would be going deep into the fall. We'd be seeing postseason baseball in November. One of the big reasons why the players want to do this 114 game schedule is because they want to get paid more. They want to stay on the prorated contracts that they agreed to back in March. They want to do that for this season and obviously playing 114 games as opposed to 82 is going to get them paid more. But not only is it going to get them paid more, in theory, the MLB owners are now going to have 32 extra games to make revenue off. Now, of course, there's not going to be fans there, but that's 32 more games a season that's now going to be on TV. That's 32 more games of advertising. There's definitely money to be made here by having more games in the season. And you might be wondering, why didn't MLB just put this in their original proposal to play more games? We'll talk about that in a little bit. One of the main lawyers for the MLBPA talks about it. Rob Manfred's kind of a smart dude. Really, really big thing in this proposal, no pay cuts. The players do not want to take any more of a pay cut than they are already going to take for the 2020 season. A pro rate in theory is a pay cut, but at least they're still getting valued the same that their contract they agreed to was for. By taking the 50-50 revenue share or doing the pay structure the way the owners laid it out a few days ago where it's like you get percentages and you just get absolutely hammered, that's not going to fly. Players said it's pretty much pro rated or we're not going to play. And I'm completely for it. I'm with them. They have a value. Their contract has a value. In the event that the postseason doesn't happen, it's shortened. There is a plan in place to help out the owners because a lot, a lot of the revenue for Major League Baseball is going to come from the postseason. I talked about it in my video the other day, but something like close to $800 million in revenue comes into Major League Baseball for the current playoff setup that they have. If they expand to the 14 teams, which is included in this, but when they make that expansion, it's going to go north of $1 billion. That's a massive amount of revenue. So the players kind of found a nice middle ground here. They said, if there's no postseason, if there's no playoffs, canceled, shortened, whatever it is, $100 million in players' contracts deferrals can be put out. So you wouldn't have to pay them right now. You can spread it out over time. And I think that's something that's going to be important to the owners. It should be at least. If the postseason doesn't happen, let's say there's another coronavirus outbreak. Let's say the weather is crazy and it just gets too cold, too dangerous for the players to play. Their owners are not going to take nearly as big of a hit as they would have. I talked about the new playoff format. Of course, we know about the 10 teams, two wild card, and then every division winner. It looks like we're going to probably switch to the 14 team playoff, which I'm not crazy about. But if it means we do get baseball back, it means that it's an easier path to get baseball going again. Give it to me. I'm in. It's June 1st. So we have no baseball. But the expanded playoffs would be for the 2020 and the 2021 season, which is big. Originally, when talking about this, it was really only going to be for this year, one year. But you add it to 2021, that gives the owners more incentive because they're going to be making even more revenue now. Because they're going to be making more revenue for not only just one year of postseason, but two years now. And ultimately, if this like format ends up being the right move, the owners are just going to be making more money because it is going to stay in Major League Baseball. That's a pretty good concession there by the players. They want more. They think by having more teams in the playoffs, by having more players, it's going to be good for the sport. It's going to be good for the owners. It's going to be good for the money, the TV. They're thinking logically, and I get behind them for that. This would be the only way 
that I'd like to see the expanded playoffs means baseball comes back. Baseball's in a better spot. I just don't want it to ruin baseball, which doesn't feel like it would how it's being described. Now, owners are continuing to claim that they're going to lose more money if there is a season and pay the players at a prorated salary than if they don't play at all. I still firmly believe that that sentiment is not necessarily true. I just can't seem to wrap my head around the idea that the owners think that they're going to lose more money by having baseball on TV, by generating more revenue than if they don't have a season at all this year. That's extremely short-minded. You're going to kill baseball if we don't have a season this year. I'm going to tell you that right now. If the NBA, NHL, NFL, they all play this year and baseball is the only major sport not to, we are in serious trouble here. You're probably not going to be worried about your lost revenues for 2020 when you continue to be losing revenue every single year from now on because you lost interest in the sport. It's a, it's a complete cop-out. It's a horrible excuse. Now back to the proposal. Players can actually now opt out of the season for 2020. If players don't feel comfortable, if they don't want to play, they can opt out. There's also an opt out there for people who are high risk. So if you're someone who has a weak immune system or something puts you in a high risk scenario or a loved one, a family member, someone close to you is also high risk. You don't want to risk infecting them. You have the ability to opt out as well. Now, those that are high risk will get paid and will get service time. Those who opt out just because they don't want to be involved in it, they don't feel like it's worth their risk and they aren't high risk. They won't get paid, but they will still accumulate service time. Service time, as we know, is huge in Major League Baseball. You need certain amount of time until you become a free agent. And in theory, everybody, when they hit free agency, that's when you make the contract where you actually start to make some real money. So I think that's a nice concession by them. Listen, I might not play this year. I don't want to do it. That's my personal choice, but at least let me still get the service time. Owners are probably going to hate that, but I think that's a good starting point. And of course, the people who are high risk, like, hey, this might be dangerous for me to play. Or I'm going to put someone that's close to me in danger. I think that's 100% the right move. Give them service time. Give them money, even though they can't play. I talked about the new proposal adding 32 games. I'm just going through my notes here on the left side of my screen, although it might be right side for you. Players just want to play as many games as physically possible. They've talked about double headers again. There's a willingness to play play double headers this season if that means getting more games into the schedule which again I'm all for double headers hell yeah give me more baseball I've gone months without it I literally would take a 30 game season where it's like oh once a week for the rest of the year you're gonna get the team playing one game I would take it at this point because we have nothing so whatever it takes Give me baseball, more games, yes please. Now in regards to that Rob Manfred comment that I made about him being like a great negotiator, smart guy, here's what the MLB Players Association lawyer had to say. I think it's gonna really open up your eyes to this negotiation here between the players and the owners because a lot of people are really down thinking that there's no chance it happens. But listen to what this guy says. I think it's going to make a lot more sense to you as what's going on. Because remember, these are negotiations at the end of the day. Rob Manfred has this tendency which can fool some people but doesn't fool you if you've been around the block once or twice. Former MLB PA lawyer Gene Orza said earlier Sunday. And that that is, he has something he knows he's going to give you for nothing, but why bother giving it to you for nothing if you might throw it out there without it and make you demand it so that he can come back and say, well, all right, if you want to do it, I mean, okay, you got to give me something for it. No doubt in my mind, they want more games. They know the players want more games, so let the players ask for more than 82. I think the union is sensitive to that. It's a negotiation tactic at the end of the day. Everything is negotiations here. Rob Manfred is not going to give the player something for free because when they do ask for it, it's essentially a way for him to then get what he wants by conceding to this. So if he can see now to this 114 game schedule, he goes, well, if you're going to play 114, maybe this happens or maybe that happens now. That's our middle ground. That's our compromise. Smart guy. Baseball, of course, before it could start the regular season would need to restart spring training. These players would need to get paid for spring training, get paid for their time. They want to do a $100 million like push into the players pool here so that they can get paid for spring training. They're basically asking for $100 million in salary in advance to help for spring training right now. 170 million was what they did for the first two months of the season, if you're wondering. If the postseason is canceled, now this kind of goes back to the the beginning, but if the postseason is canceled, contracts over $10 million before the pro rate could be deferred. So someone like Mike Trout, who makes like $30 million a year, let's say the postseason is canceled, the contract for this year, that money can be deferred throughout different years. Same thing with a guy like Bryce Harper, Jacob deGrom, Clayton Kershaw, all these guys making big bucks. You can defer that if the postseason were to be canceled, which I feel like owners are legitimately worried about. And you can understand because if there is another outbreak of the coronavirus, there's a good chance that the league can't play in October or November. Completely understandable. I think that's a pretty good medium ground there that the players are saying with the owners. Teams with large payrolls. So think of like the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Dodgers. They would receive as much as $7 million in relief by doing like this plan. I know that doesn't help out a ton, but that is still saving millions of dollars, which people are getting mad about the players not wanting to play for because they're being greedy, but now they're trying to save those billionaires money. Are they still greedy anymore? Eh, ridiculous. Not the point of this video. And then the final two bullet points that I want to talk about with this new proposal in today's video, they're kind of interesting, kind of cool. Stuff that is going to help the game of baseball grow in my opinion. Broadcasting 
enhancements. We saw in spring training, a lot of players were being mic'd up. It was awesome, made for viral moments, made the games more enjoyable to watch. I was watching spring training games in the sixth and seventh inning because I wanted to see my favorite players be mic'd up in the dugout, messing around, talking with each other. I think that's a great way to pull people in to watch your product more. That's something that the players have agreed to. They were a little skeptical about in-game mics during regular season games, but now through this proposal, they've basically okayed the idea of more in-game mics on the field for content during the game to enhance the broadcast. And they've also agreed to special programming away from the ballpark. I don't necessarily know what that means. I'm thinking that it means that there's going to be like content shows, little videos done with these players outside of Major League Baseball games, which I've been asking for for the longest time. Like if you ever watch Complex on their channel, they like go sneaker shopping with rappers or they go to the mall with these people. Even that alone would be great for Major League Baseball. Just get these guys on camera more, build their personalities, promote their personalities, promote the players. That is a great way to help this league succeed. And then the last and final thing to talk about here, not huge, but still kind of an interesting thing to think about. Possibility of a home run derby and all-star game this year under this new plan. I don't know how this would work. I don't know when it would happen. And you also add in the home run derby, which of course everybody loves to watch. Last year was fantastic between Pete Alonso. I don't know if this would work if no people were able to go to this because it really is for the fans. So it just has possibility for this. There's not a whole lot of details as to what exactly would be going on, but it is worth noting. To me, what do I think? I think that this is a much better proposal for the players than what the owners originally gave. And that makes sense. The players are going to look out for themselves more than they are the owners. Do I think the owners are going to accept it as the way it is? Absolutely not. Do I wish that they would? Yes, because I want baseball back badly. But I think we are leading towards a way where we can find a middle ground and actually get baseball back. So those are my thoughts and opinions on the new proposal by the Players Association given to the owners. I'd love to know what you guys think about it down in the comment section below. Do you think it's going to happen? Whose side are you on? Do you like this proposal or do you think the other one's better? Remember to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy as well. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and you enjoy the content. Remember to check me out on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, everything Giraffe Neck Mark. Links in the description. Gonna wrap it up there. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.